first started, I still remember that the uh, who are told us that if the members requested Amana to become political party, he did not rule out the possibility. So so far, how is this the progress of this idea uh, turning into a political party? Yes, I mean uh, we are really under pressure, especially in Sabah and Sarawak. Uh, especially there, uh, the members who have joined Amana as an NGO, but very political NGO, all right. Uh, they really want Amana to be turned political party <coughs> and join the opposition, you know? uh, not to be a third force or something like that. Uh, but. Uh, <coughs> As it, as it is now, we are still holding on lah, to uh, Amana as an NGO. So I cannot really answer what's going to be the future, but I can tell you that most of our members, including the leaders of Amana, they really want Amana to be turned political party and do something concrete to bring about change. Amana is now very issue-based. And some of the issues of corruption, against freedom, individual rights, you know, we are very much amno during Tengku Tun Razak's time. Very much, we are we are very much uh, uh, this, uh, with the situation uh, set up by our founding fathers of all races. That's why we call ourselves Amanah Merdeka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, on issues and so on, we seem to be almost eighty percent. You know, in agreement with what the opposition seem to be fighting for. So, so far, on issues, we are together. Does it plan to have any role in the election? Or, or prior to the election, you know, what are the things that you are going to do related to the coming election? We are, we are going to discuss about this very soon. Mm. I cannot tell you. But, uh, as you know, we are really beginning to make our voice heard, you know, to bring about change. For us, many of us, the leaders especially, we have been there already. We have been ministers and so on. We don't have to go back there. But we see a lot of things not being done right. So we owe it to the future generation. It's a bit of contribution to the future generation. So, you know, I've said a few things there. So there are plans you know, that you have been discussing yeah, coming election, we really didn't discuss about uh, about election as such. Uh, we know that a lot of things are not right, and we have to put it right, and uh, that we are beginning to do. And how uh, what would be our position in the next election? That we have not decided yet. As I said, most of our members, including the leaders of Amana, they really would like to turn Amana into a political party, you know, and, so and join the elections. Right? Yes, yes. But uh, <laughs> we are holding on to that. There was this report saying that Amana had acquired a name of the party. It's called the Malaysian United People's Party, MUPP, which was uh, formerly a Sabah party, to, as a, as a prepare, preparation to venture into, into politics. Yeah, of course. They are, uh, if we want to become a political party, then we have to convert you know, we have to have an EGM and decide that uh, change uh, Amana into a political party and we have to apply for registration. You know, and of course there's always this fear that the government will delay our application yeah, yeah. or will reject our application even though we know in the constitution there's our legal right, our constitutional right. But, uh, you know, all these so many fundamental rights have been abused so far. And of course, there are people coming around, you know. There are a lot of parties which are not active now. And they say, why don't you use my political party? Why don't you use my political party? It's not one, there are many. Oh, they offer? Yes, to, for us to use their political party. But I told them, you know, I mean, if we decide to go political, you know, I mean, we should apply for political party. Why should we... we uh, I mean, we, we, I mean, we use another party, you know. We have our constitution and so on, and it's our constitutional right. It doesn't, uh, shouldn't take long to approve it.
if the government is sincere. Yeah. But the, the fact is not right there, right? Yeah, if they are not sincere, the rakyat will know it, will go to court. Anyway, we will cross the bridge when it comes. <laughs> We are quite lucky because it is now we have now evolved uh, a two uh, group of parties, you know. One is Barisan National and Pakatan. Both are multiracial. This is happening only since 2008. It wasn't there before that. Yeah. Both are multiracial. Both believe that we have to live like a multiracial family. Both uphold the constitution through and through, uphold the constitution, you know, with all those things that's inside there, you know, the monarchy, the Malay language, the Islam is the official language, uh, religion, and all these things, both sides. Uh, both sides are pro-business. Uh, both sides want to uh, work towards a high-income, equitable society. So there you are, you know. We have a two-party system now, you know. But one party has been there 50 over years. You know, we know 6,000, 8,000 years of history. Any party, however good and well-meaning they are, if they are that long, the bad habits takes root. I don't say it. Najib keep on saying it. Mahyudin keeps on saying it. Other Amno leaders keep on saying it. Choi Soi Lake keeps on saying it. We must change, otherwise we'll be changed. Kita mesti berubah. Jika tidak, kita akan diubah. So it means they accept three things. A, there are some bad, bad habits among their party members and so on. Number two, they know the rakyat knows, know about it and the rakyat don't like it. Number three, they must quickly change, otherwise the rakyat will vote them out. This, I don't have to say it. You know, the leaders of BN are saying it all the time. You know? Okay. But somehow or other, in this BN, you know, there is still a dominant party, a very dominant party. So things can be quite restrictive in that sense. You mean that there is a party very dominant in BN? Yes. I'm not, it's very dominant. So they can be quite restrictive to the others, you know? in terms of check and balance and so on, in terms to have a more equitable situation. On the other side, Pakatan Rakyat, you have three parties who are quite equal in terms of their strength. PAS seems to represent more of the rural Malays. PKR seems to represent more of the liberal urban Malays. And DAP seems to be representing the Chinese at large. You know, and they are quite equal in terms of their strength, which means that all of them will really, between the, they will really try to accommodate each other and to be fair to each other. No one will be, be dictating too much <laughs> to the others and so on. So we can expect a more, a fairer uh, uh, decision you know, when this happens. Okay, and these people have been waiting in the wings for 50 over years, seeking a chance to serve seeking a chance to serve. And uh, they are very highly qualified people now in past, for example. You know, they are Malays, Muslims, but very highly qualified. Not qualified from al -Zahar. Now you have, you know, um, engineers, professionals, you know, Western educated, liberals, you know, in past now. In fact, the last uh, part, their party election shows that these this liberal thinking people have are quite dominant in their Supreme Council. All right. So we have uh, very highly educated people, you know, waiting there, you know, crying to be given an opportunity to serve. And they are highly qualified and God-fearing. So, you know, this is the kind of situation we have. You know, the rakyat must make their choice.